Thank you, students. You're welcome to the science class. I hope you're doing well. Like we understand, we started our new topic of body organ, human body organs, and we just mentioned them, like you have them there. But for today, I want us to look at exactly where they are positioned in our bodies. When you look at here, such a picture like this, it shows you exactly where these body organs are found. We have the eyes. For, to, for as, as of this, we are going to use one because it is singular. Have the eye, have the ear, and this is the eye, this is the ear. We have the brain. The brain, you can't see it, it is in your, in your head. It is found in the skull. Then we have got the lungs. The lungs are straightened in the thoracic cavity. The lungs are two. Since this is your right hand, we have the right lung. And this is your left hand, we have the left lung. And they are here. This is the left and this is the right. When I stand here like this, this is the left, this is the right. Clear? We have got the heart. The heart is found below the lungs. But also below but within the lungs. In the lower part of the lungs. And it is between there. And it's also in the thoracic cavity. What protects the lungs and the heart is the, the, the thorax. Now, we have got the stomach, and here is our stomach. We have got the gallbladder, we have got the kidney. The kidneys are in the lower part of the abdomen. You can call the stomach, but the lower part of the abdomen. We have got the liver. We have got the pancreas, we have the intestine, we have the small intestines where food is absorbed and then we have the large intestine where the undigested food, water is, absor is, is absorbed from the undigested food and it's a passage of the undigested food we are calling the feces to the, to the anus. Now, we are going to look at how these body organs work some of them. We may not conclude all of them, but we are going to look at some of them. Let's begin with the ear. We described the ear and we said that this part of the ear you're seeing is what we call the pinna. Everyone, you can touch your pinna. This is the pin of the ear. And it is this one here. The, the pinna, its work is to collect sound waves. I know a friend would be talking from the other side, radio is this end, but all that sound can be collected using the ear, the pinna. And that sound enters through the ear canal. The ear canal is that passage where you put your hand when you're cleaning. And when you put, um, I mean when there's, uh, there's the ear canal, this sound is in the form of waves. So sound, this is now sound waves. The pin receives sound waves through the ear canal. Now that those sound waves reach what we call the eardrum. The eardrum will vibrate. The work of the ear, eardrum is to vibrate, to change sound waves into vibrations. So it will vibrate, and when it vibrates, there is what we call the inside there, there is what we call the ear oscars. These are the small bones, there are three small bones that are found there. And these small bones, we have what we call the hammer, we have what we call the incas, and we have what we call the Stir up. Now, after when sound reaches, when sound vibrations from the eardrum continue, they remove this. The work of the ear canal, the, the, the ear oscars, these three bones, is to transport the sound vibrations to the cochlea. Cochlea is inside the ear, but its work is to change the sound vibrations into impulses, and it is a fluid form fluid found. So, the fluid inside there changes the sound, the vibrations into impulses. And those impulses are taken by the auditory nerves to the brain. The work of the brain is to interpret the sound, the, the, the information, the message that has been received through the ear. That's why when I call you John, that sound will first go through all those steps I've told you to the brain, the brain interprets that, oh, teacher is calling you. Then say, oh, then you are supposed to answer. Yes, teacher, because you have received that. Now, the brain is here. The work of the brain is for thinking. The brain has got parts, and each part does a different function. We have parts here, 
where we have reasoning. This front part here, we reason. The work of the brain is to reason, is to think, is to store information. Understand when you're in P1, your teacher has taught you something. But up to now, when I ask you, you can't remember because you st your brain kept that information which you learned from P1. Are we together? Let's continue. After the brain, we have got also the human lungs. The human lungs are two. We have the, like I told you, we have the left and the right. The work of the human lungs. When you breathe in from the nose, when you breathe in, the oxygen, the air that you take in, is not only oxygen, oxygen and carbon dioxide, the air enters the lungs through the trachea. And when it reaches there, the trachea branches into the bronchus. So we have the bronchus. So when there are two, which is bronchus, bronchus, so the two are called bronchi. And now they divide into the, into the, the lungs. Now in the lungs, there are small sacs called the alveoli. Their work is to, it's where gaseous exchange takes place. So oxygen is absorbed and the carbon dioxide is released. That's why when you breathe in, that air, they will pick the, the lungs will pick the oxygen and then the carbon dioxide will be moved out. That's why when we breathe out, that carbon dioxide is a bit hot, a bit warm, that when you breathe out here like this onto your hand, you realize that it is warm air. Are we together? Okay, so we have got the human heart as part of the human body organs like we have discussed. Now the work of the human heart is to pump blood to all parts of the body. The whole of this body, each part has received blood. And it's the work of the heart to pump blood to all those body parts. How does it do it? Remember the blood which is supposed, which is supposed to be pumped has to have oxygen. And that kind of blood we call it oxygenated blood. And where does this blood get oxygen? Remember we discussed about the, the lungs, human lungs, where oxygen is got and taken into the lungs. And now the blood in the lungs receives oxygen. So, this is the human heart, and this is how the heart works. Well, it, has got, it has got the pulmonary vein, it has got the vena cava. Vena cava is the inlet for blood. Understand this blood, is not oxygenated, it has no oxygen. We therefore call it deoxygenated blood. Blood that has moved the whole body and has lost oxygen. Now, then on this other side, on the, on, on this other side, we, on, the, on the left side, we have got what we call the iota, and then we have what called the pulmonary vein. Now, this is how they work. When blood has lost oxygen in the whole body, it will come, it will enter the heart, through the vena cava. When it enters through the vena cava, because the, the, the heart has muscle, its muscles are so strong and they are rhythmic, they are always pumping, this blood has the pressure, to be, uh, it receives the pressure to be pumped through the pulmonary vein. And where does it go? It goes to the lungs, where we say that when blood is in the lungs, it picks oxygen. Now, after picking oxygen from the lungs, it moves, hope the lungs are up this it moves after receiving oxygen, it comes now. It comes back to the heart for the second time through the pulmonary vein. And when it enters the pulmonary vein, it also comes to get pressure to be pumped to other body parts. Now, when it comes, it comes through the pulmonary vein, it now, it is pumped out through the iota. Now, we are saying that this blood here, which has entered the pulmonary vein, has oxygen. It is called oxygenated blood, which is the blood needed. Now, this blood is pumped through the iota to all other body parts. And therefore, we summarize that the heart, the work of the heart is to pump blood to all body parts. And this blood has to be oxygenated blood.